So I got a bit carried away making this kicker ramp. Welcome back. So my son asked us to make a kicker ramp, which is basically like a jump thing for BMXs and mountain bikes and stuff like that. And he'd seen an awesome video over on the Seth's Bike Hacks channel where he was showing you how to make one and stuff. If you're into bikes, don't forget to subscribe to Seth's Bike Hacks awesome channel. And there's loads of videos on YouTube about how to make a simple kick a ramp out of like plywood and OSB and that sort of thing. But as you're probably aware, I run a little cabinet making business. So I thought it would be fun to see what you can make if you've got a joinery shop full of tools at your disposal. Now I'm using just scrap off cuts of wood for everything here. The only thing I've bought is a small sheet of five and a half mil hardwood ply for the top which cost about 12 pounds so this isn't really a diy build but it's more geared around people who are maybe looking to push their joinery skills a bit more so i'm going to talk you through the whole build from beginning to end and then you'll get to see me making a fool of myself on my bike later on and because i've already covered a lot of the stuff that's in this video in other separate videos every time you hear this sound you'll see a little thing pop up below and it will tell you the video number of the video that I've already made that goes into that particular topic in a bit more detail. And I'll include links in the description below as well to all of the videos that go into those different things. Let's crack on and get this thing built. So I'm using professional grade 18 millimetre Medite moisture resistant MDF for the sides. I wouldn't normally recommend MDF for something like this since it's pretty heavy, but I have a plan for that. I'm using my track saw to cut the sides to approximately the correct size. Now, even with moisture resistant MDF, the edges don't like getting wet. So for some added protection, I've ripped some American white oak and I'm installing that on the bottom edges using brad nails and wood glue. I've then marked out the MDF with the main shape of the kicker ramp and I use a jigsaw to cut that out. I'm using a reverse cut blade that cuts on the downstroke so that I don't have to use the jigsaw upside down. Pendulum action is switched off and you'll get a nice clean cut. Once I've cut one side, I then trace the shape onto the other side and repeat the cut. Off camera, my assistant kindly drilled clearance holes in the sides ready for the screws that will hold everything together. He also did an epic job of countersinking everything for me. I've cut all the cross members to exactly the same size and these are both glued and screwed in place, checking for square as I go. For the main ramp top, I'm using a lamination of 6mm MDF and 5.5mm hardwood ply. Both are very easy to bend and once they're glued together will form a very rigid structure. The MDF gets glued and brad nailed in place on the underside to form the main shape. plywood is much prettier and more hard wearing so that goes on top again glued and brad nailed in place. Thank you. 
I've got loads of off cuts of 18 mil ply for the top, but nothing thinner. Realistically, 12 mil would have been fine, but I'm not buying even more wood. I've marked out the top and cut the sides off using my track saw. I then need to match the angle of the ramp itself. I copy the angle using my bevel and then set my track saw to match this angle before making the cut. I'll take it to my grave how I matched the top angle. All I can say is that I made that cut on the table saw and it was too dangerous to include in this video. All of the remaining angles are 45 degrees, which means to split the angle, I just need to make the cuts at 22 and a half degrees. I make these cuts using my table saw. The top is then glued and brad nailed in place. I use some sawdust to clean up the glue, really pushing it into the joint so there's no gaps. I'll sand this off once the glue has dried. The back panel is made in exactly the same way. Once again, 22 and a half degree cuts for the edges. Then it just remains to attach the final vertical end piece in place. Once the glue is dried, it all gets a good sand down using the random orbit sander. The next stage is to cut out the voids in the side panels. I've marked all these out at strategic points to keep the overall structure as strong as possible after drilling 10mm holes in every corner to give a nice radius. It's then just a case of joining the dots with the jigsaw. I don't want it left with sharp edges, so I'm using a quarter inch round over bit in my palm router, just to ease off all the external edges of the cutouts. I figured it would be nice to add some detail to the edges of the ramp itself and I've got loads of spare mahogany strips that would be perfect for this. I run these through my thicknesser to leave identically shaped flat strips before chopping them all in half lengthways on my table saw. I need to measure the angle between the top and the ramp itself using my locking bevel. I then split this angle using the standard dividing method and copy this over to my chop saw. The mahogany strips are then just glued and brad nailed in place. Even though these strips are pretty thin, they're still surprisingly hard to bend. So rather than risking snapping the wood, I just left the join slightly proud and I'll sand it back later on. I just used a nice sharp chisel to cut out the rebate for the hinges. If I was doing this for a customer, I'd probably use my palm router for this job since it's faster and neater, but I couldn't face any more dust on this project. Using the chisel is a lot less messy and a lot more satisfying. Then add the bumps onto the back section of the ramp. These are just glued and screwed in place. The bumps serve a number of uses. Firstly, they're great fun to ride over with a mountain bike, either down the ramp or up the ramp. And secondly, they protect the wheels from accidentally being ridden on. If you catch one of those little wheels, you're gonna know about it. Then comes the fun part. All of the bare wood is being stained using mahogany wood dye. This is brushed on, left for a minute or so, and then rubbed off with blue roll. While that's drying, I make a start on priming the MDF using an acrylic primer undercoat. I've masked off the stained oak at the bottom using frog tape, used a small brush for all of the fiddly edges and a mini roller cut in half for the bigger areas. This sort of project would have been much easier to spray paint, but I'm not set up for spraying, so I had to settle for a more manual approach. Just don't look at the paint job too closely. 
I forgot to mention too, I filled all of the screw holes in the MDF using two part resin filler. Don't look at the filling job too closely either. By now what was supposed to be a two hour project with my son in the workshop had turned into a three day woodworking extravaganza so I had to rein things in a bit. The primer was all sanded once it was dry before applying a water based gloss top coat. Finally, once the wood stain had dried, I just used some Osmo Polyex oil to seal and protect the wood. And the nice thing about doing something like this is that it lets you have a play with a few different materials and maybe using things in a way that you wouldn't normally use them. For example, I have no idea whether or not Osmo oil is hard wearing enough to use on a kicker ramp and we will find out. Please don't judge our biking abilities it's literally 30 years since I rode a bike on a jump and this is my son's first ever shot of using a jump with his BMX. So we need a bit of practice. This is literally us using it for the first ever time. I have ordered my kids to destroy this ramp and that's another quite nice thing is that, you know, you spend a long time making something and normally you're frightened to touch it. Well, not with this. I want to see it used and abused by not only my kids, but anyone else who wants to have a go on it. And if it still looks like this in a couple of months time, words will be had. If you're new to the channel and like learning about making stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. If you've made a kick a ramp video, post a link below. It will automatically get blocked by the YouTube robots, but I will allow it through. I think it's always interesting to see how other people go about tackling a project like this. Take care and stay safe folks and see you next time.